on social dimension and the Indian figures in social parameters. For example, gender equality, women empowerment, labor force participation, women education. Look at China and India. They have sorts ahead of India. So it is not that Chinese have surpassed us economically, but they have also surpassed us socially. This is what Bank data says. So we have not done very big in other front also. Though we are growing, we are, we are going to be the fastest growing economy next year, 9%. Today, again, I think this uh, one international rating agency as a Moody, I think, they have revised the forecast from 7 to 9%. So definitely government will talk today evening. You see, now Moody is also accepting our forecasting. Definitely it will come. But look at the other part. That is also there, which is one of the most important dimension of development of financial market because participation of labor force, <coughs> equal participation of labor force, that is when the gender is sidelined, nothing is going to go. Okay. You cannot continue the growth. So that we have to work on. That is one of the important things. Immediately something has come up, which will affect the market. Maybe uh, in uh, near terms, two to three months, that is oil shock. Oil has reached 100 per barrel today because of this Ukraine crisis. You never know if it persists. The crisis persists for one more week, it will cross 120. So that is going to have another big shock for the market. Maybe it is, but it will be near term. It is not forces for long. But it is. Fiscal deficit will be a big challenge to control. Though government has given a roadmap that by 25, year 25, we have to come down to 4.5. This is roadmap given in the budget. That, that makes uh, the market more. <coughs> yes, government is thinking that line. But really, are you going to able to do it or not. Now the 6.4, why not it will be 7% tomorrow or next year? Because post COVID, we have to have more investment, so more fiscal deficit. CapEx is now uh, 7.5 lakh crore. Total CapEx is around 10 point some lakh crore, including Monrega and other uh, investments. So can we contain that uh, growth of fiscal deficit in next year? So there is a big question mark. Can you contain the inflation? Inflation now, wholesale price index inflation double digit, which was negative one year back. Now it is double digit, WPI, mm -hmm. not CPI. Can you contain that? The third dimension is coming, the election. Five elections result will also have some drag on the market sentiment. If it goes in favor of the government, the natural market will be happy, continued will be there, otherwise there will be drag. So, so socio-political and economic environment and the changes will always have an impact on the market. <clears throat> it is very difficult to say that the budget is only boosting the market or driving the market, either way, whether it is dragging or going on. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Pati, for that uh, uh, insightful analysis. Uh, now, I think uh, we'll come back to uh, Dr. Prasanjit Biswas, leader the social scientist now, who has, in addition to an economic uh, understanding, also I have to say, uh, has an understanding of the different other dimensions uh, as a social scientist. So let's hear him. And then the topic that it is very, very contextual to the young, the young research class who are here itself, is job crisis and budget implication for the states. So now the floor is yours, Dr. Prasanjit. <coughs> Thank you for waiting patiently. Thank you, Professor Panda, and my esteemed colleagues and friends here. Though I thought generally that uh, after a month or so, almost have elapsed from the budget, and uh, we should look at it, some of its impacts, you know, the speculated impacts and the real impacts of the budget. So one data that puts us down is the CMI data about the job situation in the uh, market at this moment. It has gone up to 7.1% to 7.4% on February 22nd, that is yesterday. So unemployment rate has gone higher. 
Now, once unemployment rate goes higher, then we need to analyze certain complicated factors. One, of course, is the factor market, where we would be able to talk about stress on the labor market, <clears throat> whether the labor market is stressed at this moment or not. Statistically speaking, in January, labor was moving out from agriculture to industry. But as there is a slump in manufacturing sector, and slump is calculated today on 22nd of February at the level of minus 0.8%, having an impact of job losses of 1.2 million in the manufacturing sector alone. In the digital sector, job loss of around uh, 0.3%. Five lakh, which is not a big number, but nevertheless, we can see the digital sector is also going down. Overall, in the service sector, the buoyancy that we have experienced in February at the level of 1.5% is sort of spinned off in the manufacturing and in the digital sector. So labor is under critical stress at this moment especially labor, which is employable in terms of education, in terms of skill, uh, is quite under stress. And they are not having much opportunities left for them if manufacturing sector is not picking up very soon. Given the current situation of the demand in the country, uh, and by a conservative estimate by uh, Princeton University, after the budget, whether demand, aggregate demand has shrunk or it has expanded. Now, Princeton uh, Group says, the India Observing Monitoring Group in the Princeton University states, they said day before yesterday, that aggregate demand actually has shrunk, shrunk by minus 0.5% uh, at the country level. Now, with the shrinking aggregate demand, and it will shrink further as predicted, uh, whether there is a way to turn back to a, a better employment scenario. I don't see that kind of a scenario coming forth. Now, this is connected to a structural issue. The structural issue is about generating demand. Much of the government expenses in the, this budget is all about uh, non-demand expenditure, the so-called capex expenditure, which is a long-term expenditure, which uh, Kongpat has also pointed out. Professor, they also have pointed out capex expenditure is not a short term expenditure, creating multiplier effect in the market. So there is no multiplier effect visible in the market. Rather, there is a recessionary trend, you know, that CMI has calculated. And the trend is very little, minus 0.3% or something like that. But there is no way that this sulking trend will upturn. There is no, no factor that tells us that the sulking trend of recession can upturn at this moment. <clears throat> Added to that is the Ukraine war, the headwind that is blowing in the economy, and the crash in the uh, market, share market, uh, has actually created a situation of a liquidity trap. Many of you who are in economics would be knowing what is liquidity trap. I won't explain. Professor Lagbinder Singh had referred to the ISLM situation over the next 25 years or so. But agrarian crisis is deepening. Deepening is the crisis of the rural job sector. Deepening is the crisis of the urban uh, job sector. Deepening is the crisis of service sector job situation. So with all this crisis deepening, how are we going to recharge our monetary policy and the fiscal policy? The talk is in terms of extending the fiscal deficit or reducing the fiscal deficit. So I was talking to uh, Professor Vidit Banerjee just two days back in Kolkata. I met him. He told me unless India takes a path of spending three trillion Indian uh, rupee just for pumping in demand in next two years, recessionary trend is not going to be resolved in Indian economy. So therefore, more money has to be given in the hands of the poor people, marginalized people, and more jobs, Narega, cut in Narega to 98,000 crores, where the demand was 2.31 to 3.334 uh, lakh crore was the demand for Narega money this year, has been brought down to 98,000 crore, and there's a huge deficit in Narega wage. 72,000. Yes, now 73,000 to be precise. 
Now, wage floor is also falling. We can see that there is no fixed minimum wage in the country and wage floor is falling, more or less an agreed wage, a minimum wage is around 270 to 273 rupees. Now, with this kind of a compression of the wage floor, added to that compression of the aggregate demand, added to that a recessionary tendency in the economy, how are we going to have a different kind of a policy framework is a, is a very, very important question. Now, this question is put to the policymakers, but as economists and analysts, we have certain tools in the normative social theory that we deploy. One of the very important tool that Nobel laureate Robert J. Schiller, 2018 Nobel laureate, he talks about borrowing from epidemiology, a kind of narrative setting in the economy. So what is the dominant narrative that we are setting in the economy? The narrative that we have set is about a capital expenditure would boost, would boost private investment. We have set a narrative that FDI is all time record high. Now, export sector is showing shrink demands, uh, less, less of less and less of demand, even in textile sector for India. Export is not growing in India. So what is the meaning of having this uh, extraordinary amount of FDI? Government is only serving some of the you know, debt that they have, to, they have incurred by holding American reserve. And government is losing around 50,000 crore per year just by serving uh, American treasury bonds in Indian market. So, so what is the meaning of having this level of FDI if that FDI cannot be converted into creation of job? So the setting of the narrative itself has gone wrong. And uh, Professor Thomas Poge, who works about global justice, has pointed out that the wage floor compression in India, the growth of hunger in India, the growth of uh, all kinds of indexes, body mass indexes are falling in the large case of population, actually points to a very stressful labor market. And given this stress on the labor market, it's not really possible to think about a growth situation. Now, in such situation, we have to have a very different kind of advocacy. And I have written an article last year, it was published, how to grow green shoots in Indian economy. It is published in the Pioneer, a national newspaper. I have elaborately argued there. And my argument is that we have to adopt a model of degrowth. We have to distinguish between the level of employment from the level of growth. We have no way to connect growth and employment. We really need to seed this connection between growth and employment by giving greater thrust on employment as degrowth theorists advocate. Degrowth theorists like George Callis and Kate Redworth advocated that we should move towards universal basic income. We should have a furlough <coughs> situation like U.S. Treasury uh, provides to the U.S. citizens. We should introduce a universal basic income. And this is fiercely argued by Amartya Sen, Koshik Basu, and Abhijit Banerjee, those who are all for aggregate demand raising. But government is trying to do supply side management. And by doing so, it is putting more further risk on the consumers. Consumption and income ratio has fallen. Then... Uh, uh, another very important uh, factor called uh, uh, labor force participation rate has fallen from 49% in 1978 to around 37%. Then the migration of labor force, which was in the pre-pandemic level at about 11% or so at the national average, now it has fallen to 6%, almost the half. Labor migration has almost come to an end. So therefore, what is happening to the uh, manufacturing sector is again a very distressful situation. And there is a lot of underemployment that is being borne by the agricultural sector and other primary sector. So budget doesn't show a way out. Not the economic survey shows a way out to these perplexing questions. And therefore, I think as Obhijit Banerjee was saying, I agree with him, that fiscal deficit should not be contained. We should allow more expenditure. If more expenditure has to be allowed, 
Then now who is left with the task of uh, expending money? I think states are left with the task of expending money. And many of the states are very hesitant. The state from where I come is Assam. Assam could not provide employment as promised, one lakh debt uh, teachers' employment. It's not, it is at the level of uh, 17, 18,000. That's where uh, my friend Bishra Sharma has stopped. Uh, therefore, uh, we can see that in West Bengal also, there is a huge uh, kind of a uh, rural indebtedness that is growing at this point of time, which uh, just now I have been doing a survey in Sundarban and certain other rural areas of West Bengal. I see rural indebtedness is growing. And rural indebtedness is not met by substantial amount of fund allocation at the uh, local panchayat levels. Panchayats are stirring of funds at this moment in West Bengal. Similar cases happening in Tamil Nadu. Uh, panchayats in Tamil Nadu are not being given proper funding by the state government uh, with its share of Narega and other such uh, Narega-like products, Narega-like uh, schemes. So therefore, welfare schemes are defunded. Now, defunding of the welfare scheme is one implication of a certain lack of federal response. Uh, it's not a kind of federal gesture that the center is allowing only borrowing from the market. But center should give its finance commission commitments. State of West Bengal has not been given 18,000 crore. Assam has not been given 2,000 crore. And small states like Meghalaya, which entirely depends on the finance commission contribution by other states, probably won't get its finance commission money. Therefore, how would state fund its own schemes? So state schemes are all falling apart. And this is a very, very distressful situation at the bottom level. So budget of the states have to be watched over, the budgets that are going to come. Budget uh, that is going to come in Bengal, budget uh, which has happened in Tamil Nadu, is partly successful, but partly largely unsuccessful with the new DMK government. And Maharashtra budget also, the story is not very encouraging because a lot of farmer suicides are happening in Maharashtra. In Karnataka, you can see the state is under a turmoil and economic issues are taking a back seat. So uh, you can see that state budgets are not able to control the state finances and state government expenditure is actually falling. So given all this, there is a situation of a big glut at the level of employment and growth. And you can discover this glut everywhere in every sector of the economy. And the glut doesn't bring a kind of a bowing situation. It distresses any factor market uh, element. And therefore, I don't see how we are going to overcome this situation, except in some centrally funded areas like higher education, health, and in some kind of funding in infrastructure, we can see certain buoyancy, but that buoyancy is not enough to uh, turn itself uh, into a kind of a productive situation for the whole economy. So sectorally, there is growth in a very few sectors. Other sectors are in a distressful condition. And this is pretty paradoxical. It has developed since 2014, and I have no answer how you know this can be overcome. Only thing one feels that maybe some good intelligence would come from somewhere. RBI is doing some funding. Let RBI take over the economy. Some economists do take do think like that. RBI is refueling the government expenditure. Let RBI uh, you know cut down repo rate further and allow some government expenditure. But I don't know uh, whether RBI can at all do this. That's the only uh, only institution for our shelter and rescue. I don't know to what extent RBI itself is in good health. So therefore, there is a lot of problem for us unless these critical issues are sorted out. Uh, budget deliberation and mere economic survey is not going to help us anywhere. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prasanjit Biswas, uh, giving that uh, social scientist perspective, particularly the narrative building by economist. <laughs> That's a, I don't, a very new dimension maybe to many of our economist friends. Uh, so now I think we have for our respected panelists. Now, I think uh, there are a good number of participants very patiently. I think they have joined online. So I would give first a chance to any one of them 
or I think good number of them would like to speak or reflect or have any specific question to any of our panelists or even a general question also, so that uh, any of our panelists can take it up. Uh, uh, Tamil is just see is any, you can please raise your hands or I uh, you know. Tamil is just see if anyone is raising hand or something like that. You can unmute them all now. Put the question in the box. No? Yeah, yeah. You can also put the question in the chat box also. Uh, Temple, you just see if in the chat box there are some questions. Any comment also? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there are some comments also. That's also most welcome. Although it took a lot, that's a long time because of seven panelists, but a very insightful learning exercise for each one of us. I hope actually our research class also have learned a lot. I hope so. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, Professor Singh, Professor Misra, Professor Bejbarua, are you all there itself? <laughs> Hello? No, no, they're all there itself, I can see. They're all muted. Uh, they're yeah. all, uh, I think. Uh, have to unmute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Singh is there, Professor Yeah, all, they're all there. They're all, Professor Misra is also there, I can see. Emily, just unmute them. Uh, sir, just one. I think the correction will be possible. Are yeah, actually, that's the whole problem. Yeah. Why it's happening so much, so, no, frequently? Are, that's why they're unable to hear us, no? So we are going to digital mode now. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you are so relevant. <laughs> now, digital is also good and uh, digital industry. And, 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 and this is a dedicated line from uh, BSNL. <laughs> <laughs> 